Hello and welcome to Say Talks, the show where we give you the rundown of everything that goes down. I'm Busong Seo, one of your hosts, and today I'm joined with a very special guest, Serena Aslu. In today's episode, we'll be providing insight into the CA admission process and give tips and tricks to our juniors for the spring semester. So, Serena, as a recent junior who was admitted to CA, what are some tips and tricks you would give to prospective students? Okay, so first thing I did when I saw the CA admissions page and I was like, okay, this is what I've got to do, is to schedule an AccuPlacer. So one of the main things in order to get admitted to CA is you have to have some sort of test score for placement purposes. So that can be done via an AccuPlacer, a PERT, an SAT, or an ACT, so long as the scores are within like two years of your admission day. So I didn't have any of that stuff, so I had to go and schedule an AccuPlacer. Um, I took that, and you have to get within a certain percentile range for both the reading and the math in order to be accepted at CA. And then you submit those scores to Broward College, and they give them to CA, and so on and so forth. All right, yeah. So I know the application deadline is February 16th, so would you give any, what are some advice you would give to prospective students? Okay, definitely start your application early because in order for you to actually go and schedule a test if you need to, for you to take that test, to get your scores back, to have those scores sent, it's a really, really long process and it can take days if not weeks. So you don't want to accidentally miss the cutoff line because you didn't get scores submitted or your account wasn't made in time or something like that. Got it. And Serena, I know this is your first time taking you know, spring semester courses here at Broward College, you know, chemistry. So what has your experience been like so far? Um, definitely a little overwhelming because fall semester was kind of like the diving head first into <laughs> CA and of then course. now I'm like, oh my god, there's so much to do. Yeah. But I think like learning to be proactive, mm -hmm. definitely, like going out of my way to read the textbooks and take notes and things like that and starting assignments early because there's a lot more classes now that like require a lot more work and a lot more of your time. So Eric, I know that me and a lot of my junior classmates mm -hmm. are STEM majors, which means we're currently taking general chemistry one, the lecture and the lab. Yeah. And I know that's definitely one of like the challenge core courses overall. So you as a senior who already took that class, mm -hmm. do you have any advice on how to do well in it? Yeah, for sure. So chemistry for a lot of you guys who don't know at our college is going to be matched with a lab so this is going to be a new experience because previously when you took these science courses you have labs incorporated into your lectures traditionally but you're gonna have a whole other day to go to the lab and do like four hours or something and you know it's very daunting it's gonna be initially scary but i think it's very important to figure out what type of student you are so are you someone who studies better with friends or you get a lot of work done by yourself. So firstly, you gotta figure out what type of student you are. Then I think a very important tip is learning how to correctly take notes that work for you. So I know a lot of you know my fellow classmates, what they'd like to do is like, if your class has PowerPoints, they like to download the PowerPoints and write directly on the slides or other students like to um, just write their own handwritten notes, so figure out which type of note-taking works for you, and I think you'll be successful. Okay. Yeah, so other tips, I know we've talked a lot about, you know, the Academic Success Center in previous episodes, but, you know, I want to reinforce that because for chemistry, I remember when I had trouble with certain concepts, I would always, you know, go to the Academic Success Center and get one-on-one -on -one tutoring for certain concepts that were pretty difficult to me. So Eric, I will be scheduling my fall semester classes for senior year in April, mm -hmm. which is really nerve-wracking. And I know especially during that time is when the whole college admissions process is going on for the most part. So do you have any advice on scheduling and different tips for fall semester to deal with that while also dealing with college admissions? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, I know there's a lot of pressure from outside sources of like, you know, people saying you have to figure out, you know, what you want to do soon and stuff like that. But, you know, if you if you have an idea of what you want to do, that's good because you could, you know, schedule your courses around that. So make sure to do your research. So, for example, if you're in, you know, you want to go into the, the medical field and study biology at undergraduate, you know, you could take courses that align with that path. If you're unsure, you know, it's always good to talk to counselors and talk to some seniors who 
are in these fields that you may be interested in, maybe the arts, you know, maybe the social sciences, and ask how are these courses and kind of get perspective from them and see if that will match you, like with what you want to do. And as for, you know, the college admissions process, you know, look, thankfully a lot of us just finished our application processes. Others are still, you know, completing the final moments, but we still have scholarships to do until we graduate. So it's, it's a very busy year, I would say, but it's important to stay ahead of the game, you know, plan out, you know, this is when I'm going to submit these colleges. This is the colleges that I'm interested in and having just like a plan of what you want and when to do it will really set you up for success, I think. Okay. So Serena, I know you've been at this campus for a semester and a half so far. So what are some ways that you're getting involved with the campus? Okay, so I have joined clubs, lots of those. I'm in the pre-med club, yeah. and he's the co-president, yeah. so I guess it works out like that. Um, I'm planning on joining Principal's Advisory, which is something that I know was discussed in one of the previous episodes. So that's a really great way to get involved, not only with my classmates, but really get involved with the school spirit and what CA is all about. Um, I know that I'm working on some things outside of that, both... Um, admitted to me through CA and just like through my own research but I have a question for you yeah so what should I do during the summer to strengthen these extracurriculars and maybe pick up some new ones yeah so great question and um, I think a really good question you should be you know asking yourself before you you know strengthen these extracurriculars is you know why like why am I getting involved with this like what's the purpose behind it and you know if you haven't figured out your purpose, I think you should uh, look for things that, you know, interest you or you're good at because, you know, as you navigate through things that you're good at and that you have an interest in, that's where you find you know, passion and purpose. So, but if I were to talk about specific things, you know, you're obviously going to have senior courses, so that's going to take a good amount of time out of your days. So I believe Monday through Fridays, you'll be having classes, two classes. So... It's finding that balance and finding what extracurriculars work, you know, for your schedule. So if you're interested in the you know, medicine or something, if you haven't already gotten involved with the hospital, it's always a good time because during the summer, that's when a lot of these hospitals are recruiting students. Um, yeah, and a lot of it comes down to personal research, you know. You have to be able to, you know, find these different opportunities around the community because there's so many. and Specifically on school, our campus is still going to be somewhat active, so if you haven't already, try to get involved with clubs your spring semester and like try to cement which clubs you want to continue and run for leadership positions because I know at the end of the spring semester, that's when a lot of these, you know, president, vice president roles kind of come up for election, that's when you can run for them, so definitely look out for that. We have a all right, well, that's going to be the end of the episode, but here are some updates for all the juniors and seniors out there. This Thursday on the 25th at 6.30, CA will be hosting a family engagement event, so make sure to stop by. It's for the class of 2025. And secondly, for the class of 2024 students, the seniors out there, if you weren't able to attend the scholarship event, show me the money last week, make sure to find the uploaded video on the D2O show. Our general assembly is going to be this Friday on the 26th, so make sure to stop by and you have a chance to win the prom ticket. And for the juniors who aren't familiar, the prom ticket is available for both juniors and seniors. And lastly, seniors, make sure to buy your cap and gowns on Johnston's website. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's about time for us to end this episode of the podcast, but don't be sad and droop. Just stay in the loop. Thanks for tuning in, but it's time for us to tune out. Bye.